I went to bed after drinking a nice and cold glass of milk, which normally helps me fall asleep but can give me some of the strangest dreams. I now stand in my old college campus, but it all seems so alien to me. New faces everywhere, nobody recognizable. I immediately know what I'm supposed to do find my friends. I begin to walk around, everyone looks at me with a smile and the occasional wave, and I shyly wave back at them. All this attention was worrying me, in college I was never this popular, but now I seem to be one of the cool kids. I enter one of the many college buildings and continue my search for these friends of mine. However, I have no idea who I am looking for, but seem sure that I'll recognize them once I see them, and I am determined to find them. I quick walk through the corridors, looking through the windows in each classroom door to try and find these lost companions. I occasionally poke my head through one of the open classroom doors to get a better look, normally I wouldn't be walking around with such a determined demeanor, since I was always quite a shy and reclusive guy in college. Knowing this was a dream must have helped me somehow, most of the fear was gone as I realized none of this would matter once I woke up. I decided my search wasn't getting me anywhere and found a bench to sit down, I must have thought I could wait this dream out until I woke up. I sit at the bench for what seems like only a few minutes, but already a crowd of girls have surrounded me. They all look around 17 or 18, I didn't ask them, but they did remind me of the plastic girls from the film Mean Girls, all look beautiful and quite chatty, talking about girly things that I didn't care about. None of the girls talked to me directly, but they had all heard it around me. I find myself surrounded by pretty girls, short skirts and numerous perfumes. I guess this explains the growing erection beneath my jeans, who could blame me? This is when the dream took a strange turn for the worse. My erection kept growing, making me wish I wasn't wearing such tight jeans, jeans that I swear were much looser at the beginning of this dream. I was too busy trying to hide the obvious bulge in my pants that I didn't notice her walking towards me. She was dressed in a traditional cheerleader's outfit, with the short skirt and everything, flanked on both sides by her fellow cheerleaders. The group of cheerleaders quickly cut through the herd of pretty girls surrounding myself and stood in an impressive diamond formation in front of me. If this wasn't a dream, I would have been scared enough to empty my bowels ten times when suddenly someone shouted Lauren. I almost fell back in surprise, but I quickly took a hold of the bench edge to steady myself. I looked up to see who was finally taking notice of me and yelling in my direction but was blinded by the sun's glare. When my eyes readjusted, I saw the group of cheerleaders in all their glory. Their hands on their hips, the sun shining behind them made them look angelic, but to be honest I just feared for my life. At the front of the diamond, standing closest to me was Nicole Richie dressed in the same cheerleader outfit she wore in an episode of Chuck, an NBC show. Her outfit's main color was a creamy brown, bordered with red and white stripes and a cougar's head as the logo, all the cheerleaders were wearing the same outfit which would have contributed to my growing erection if I was so scared. Nicole Richie then spoke in a quieter and friendlier tone, come on, it's time for practice, and beamed an excited smile right at me. I didn't know what to do or say, but before I could do anything, two of the cheerleaders took a hold of my hands and pulled me up from the bench. They linked their arms with mine and began to pull me away. I would have tried to get away, but I found I had nowhere near enough strength and the two cheerleaders easily overpowered me. I was pulled along with this group of cheerleaders, and every attempt I made to stick my feet in the ground was ruined by rough tugs on my arms from the two cheerleaders. Nobody seemed to realize that I wasn't having fun at all, as everyone was still smiling and cheering, talking about perfecting their pyramid routine. Soon the merry band of cheerleaders and myself arrived at a large gym, where several blue mats and crash mats had been arranged. The cheerleaders dispersed and began their routine with cartwheels, backflips and all that, whilst the two holding onto my arms slowly pulled me into the center of the gym. I found myself once again surrounded by dozens of beautiful cheerleaders, all performing various flips and jumps around me. All I could do was stand there in the center, because I couldn't escape. 
The gym exit was clearly in sight, but every time I tried to escape, someone pulled me back by the waistband of my trousers, which were starting to feel short as well as tight and uncomfortable, stopped every attempt I made to move towards them. I bumbled around in the center for a while, until all the cheerleaders began to assemble around me. I heard someone yell pyramid, and almost immediately after that there were girls taking hold of my feet and ankles. I was lifted up by my feet within seconds and was balancing precariously on the hands of the two cheerleaders beneath me, who were then lifted up with the same method. This continued until there were three levels of cheerleaders beneath me, and I had never felt so close to a gym roof before. I looked down and saw the squad captain Nicole smiling proudly while some other cheerleaders behind her were clapping excitedly. The mood down on the floor and the first three levels of the pyramid was jubilant, but I was fearing for my life, even if this was a dream, I wasn't even sure if it was a dream anymore. The pyramid of cheerleaders quickly disassembled without an accident, for which I was thankful, but I was soon surrounded by overexcited cheerleaders who were acting like we just won something important, I found this odd because all I had won was a battle to control my stomach, I can't remember ever being that high up from the ground. I breathed a sigh of relief when I was back on solid ground again, but as I went to run a hand through my short masculine hair, I noticed it felt much smoother and longer. My hand continued to the back of my head where I noticed my new long hair was tied in a ponytail, the end of which was reaching right beneath my shoulder blades. In stunned surprise I pulled the ponytail back over my shoulder to examine it closely, my hair was clearly much longer than it was at the beginning of the dream, but what scared me the most was that it was no longer the light brown color I was used to, but a honey blonde. I was freaking out, and began to notice more changes. My arms looked thinner and my hands more feminine, my nails were long, curved and painted in a pale pink polish. I moved away from the group of cheerleaders, with enough stealth to make sure I wasn't noticed, and then held my arms up to one of the low-hanging wall lights so I could examine the changes closer. There was no hair on my arms, and the skin tone was darker instead of the pale white I was used to. I thought to myself it'll be over soon I turned to the wall and began lightly knocking my head on the soft padded material, hoping it would make me wake up, but this only made me realize that more changes had occurred. I thought only my head was touching the wall, but I felt pressure on my chest every time I knocked my head. I looked down and screamed aloud in an oddly high-pitched tone. I have boobs! I said less loudly, B-cups to be exact. I was so shocked that I almost collapsed in a pile of mush on the floor, so shocked that I didn't even notice I was wearing a cougar's cheerleader outfit exactly like the girls around me were wearing. It was all too much to handle so I ran for the nearest exit. Only then did I notice the strange feeling of air breezing between my legs, since the skirt reached my mid-thigh. My penis would have been out there for all to see, but I couldn't feel it, for sure the erection I had earlier was gone. All I could feel was an emptiness where my penis should be, and a soft silky material covering my groin and rear. I didn't even want to think what that was, but at least it felt comfortable. I barged through the gym door and stepped into a locker room, the doors automatically closed behind me. The metal clank that came with the doors closing made me jump, with the state I was in I must have thought it was a murderer, not a door closing. I turned around to look at the door, but as soon as I did so my body felt totally different from the female body it was just moments earlier. I suddenly had my old male body back, and even if this was a dream, I have never felt so relieved. One thing that was off was the fact that I was totally naked, and there were no clothes in sight. I was hoping that this was the boys' locker room so I could find some clothes, but to my dismay the metal doors opened once again and the cheerleaders began pouring into the room. I was standing there naked in front of a dozen beautiful cheerleaders, but they didn't seem to take notice of my exposed manhood. For a moment I was disappointed and glad at the same time, how could a bunch of girls not notice a naked guy standing in their locker room? My question was answered when the group continued walking towards me, each was talking to one another about the practice session and everyone was still in a jubilant mood. Some of the girls walked around me and cheerfully patted me on the back, whilst Nicole Ritchie walked towards me, forcefully turned me around and began pushing me towards an aisle of lockers. I wasn't sure what was going on anymore. 
Did they think I was a girl? How can they not notice my manhood swinging about? Nicole made me sit down on a bench in the center of an aisle of lockers, facing her as she began to undress. I noticed the name on her locker said Heather C., the name of her character in the episode of Chuck, there was a pinkish uniform hanging in her locker, which included a blouse, pleated skirt, sweater vest, and a pair of four-inch stilettos. Heather grabbed the whole lot and rested it in a neat pile beside me, whilst everyone around us began to undress and seemed totally cool with the naked guy sitting in the center. I handed each piece of clothing as Heather asked me to. I didn't say much since I didn't mind sitting there if none of the girls did, I didn't want to ruin it. Heather placed a pair of golden hoops in her ears and a silver necklace around her neck, and then sprayed a sweet-smelling perfume beneath her neck. She was ready to leave, as was all the other girls in the room, but I was still sitting there naked. Heather turned to me and asked, are you going to get dressed? But before I could say I didn't have any clothes, two girls had snuck behind me and lifted me by my arms into a standing position, I still had no strength to resist them even if I did have my male body back. The two girls raised my arms up whilst Heather opened the locker next to hers, which was labeled Lauren C., and pulled out a small purple can of deodorant. Before I could protest, Heather began spraying my armpits and chest, covering me with a strong floral and feminine scent. When she was done, I couldn't smell anything but flowers, like I was sitting in a flower bed, except I wasn't, I was standing naked in a girl's locker room surrounded by girls trying to dress me. Heather placed the deodorant back in Lauren's locker and grabbed a pair of black lace panties and a matching bra. Both items had small pink bows in the center, joining the cups together on the bra and on the front of the panties. Heather handed the bra to one of the girls behind me whilst she herself kneeled down and made me step into the panties. I tried to stop Heather from pantying Jimmy, but was stopped by one of the girls holding my chin up, and I wasn't strong enough to push her hand away. I saw the black lace bra being slid down my arms, and I couldn't do anything to stop it, the girls were all very determined. I didn't see why they'd make me wear a bra if I didn't have breasts, but when I was allowed to look down, I saw those B-cup breasts I had earlier being slowly fitted into the bra. Heather slid the panties up my legs and I didn't feel my penis getting in the way, so it must have disappeared again. She straightened out the panties before turning back to the locker and grabbing the blouse, whilst the girls surrounding me clipped the back of the bra together and made sure my new breasts were sitting snugly in their new home. Heather held the blouse up to me and looked at me for a moment before nodding, the blouse was a very bright pink color, silky smooth with short sleeves. I grinned to myself, thinking they'd never get that to fit me, even if I had breasts and a flat crotch, I still had my male physique, but Heather and the girls didn't seem concerned. Heather lifted the blouse over me whilst the two girls grabbed my arms and gently slid them into the sleeves of the blouse. My arms slowly emerged from the sleeves and were now thinner and more feminine, my nails were painted and manicured once again, and once again I was in shock. Heather slowly slid each pink button into its hole, and my male torso slowly changed to the female torso I had earlier. I didn't know how to react, but before I could do anything Heather had handed the pink sweater vest to the girls behind me, whilst she herself began to slide the pleated skirt up my legs. My legs emerged from the bottom of the skirt and were cleanly shaven, just like the girls around me. The sweater vest was lowered over my head and thankfully no magical changes took place, they only added to the humiliation I felt. None of the girls were laughing or jeering, they just appeared to be happily helping another girl get dressed. The two girls behind me pushed down on my shoulders and made me sit down on the bench, whilst another girl made sure my skirt didn't rack up. I noticed that my skirt was the only item of clothing that wasn't completely pink, it had pink and white squares instead, whilst the blouse was just a paler pink compared to the sweater vest. Heather lifted up my left foot, which still appeared to be a man's foot. I hoped I'd be able to retain the last remaining proof of my masculinity but that wasn't to be. Heather lifted the first pink stiletto and easily slid it onto my foot, which seemed to instantly change into a much smaller and feminine foot, with equally smaller toes. My toenails remained unpainted as they poked out the front of the open-toed stiletto, which I was happy about. Heather reached for the other stiletto and began to slide it onto my other foot. 
I looked away because I didn't want to watch the last of my masculinity disappear, but thankfully I wasn't able to, as a girl who looked exactly like Lo Bosworth soon blocked my view. She was holding a small brown box and asked me to hold it for her, I didn't understand why but did as she asked, I guess it was a distraction from my humiliation. Lo then casually sat down in my lap and told me to close my eyes, I tried to ask why but my lips didn't move and my eyes closed almost immediately. I heard Lo searching through the box I was holding, there was so much rattling of plastics and glass, I wasn't sure what it was but I wasn't able to open my eyes to look. The girls surrounding me had all started having their own conversations, which helped me calm down a bit after being the center of attention for what seemed like years. I felt someone filing my toenails and painting them, whilst Lo began to spread a creamy liquid over my face. I still couldn't stop them, it was like someone else was controlling my body, and I just wanted this all to end and to wake up. Someone was blowing on my toenails, probably to dry my newly painted nails. Lo started brushing something on my eyelids whilst occasionally saying how pretty I was and trying to make conversation. I wasn't able to move my lips so I couldn't reply, but she kept talking as if I had replied, as if the two of us were really close friends. I began to wonder who Lo though she was talking to, then remembered the name on locker where the outfit I'm wearing came from. Lauren C. Was I now this Lauren C? I didn't want to think I'd changed into a completely different person, but I didn't see any other option. I tried to ask, who's Lauren, and assumed that my lips wouldn't move, but to my surprise they did move and the words came out in a feminine voice. I was able to open my eyes so I could see what kind of look Lo would give me, but she just grinned at me and said you're Lauren, sweetie I looked at Lo and must have looked like an idiot, but in truth I was just surprised. You've been Lauren for twenty years now, duh, said Lo in a cheerful tone, thinking I was joking. Twenty years, I said in my new feminine voice, still totally confused. Lo nodded excitedly and grabbed a small tube filled with a pink liquid, she unscrewed the top and pulled out a lip gloss wand and began to slowly apply the pink gloss to my lips. I didn't even try to resist when I realized I was stuck like this, there was no use trying to get away. Lo took one of the larger brushes and started brushing some powdery substance onto my cheeks. I didn't bother to ask what it was, I was resigned to my fate. I knew that Lo was applying makeup to my face but that was all I knew. Lo grabbed a tube of mascara and a black pencil, she raised the pencil to my eye and began drawing it around the contours of my eye. I would normally freak out when something like that was so close to my eye, but I didn't flinch, it was as if I was used to all this makeup stuff, but I've never worn makeup in my life, so the thought was all the more worrying. Lo told me to look up whilst she brushed on the mascara with the wand before proudly announcing she was finished. She closed the brown box and placed it on the bench beside me, then threw her arms around my shoulders and pulled me into a hug. I would have kept my arms by my sides, after all these girls have done to me I wasn't going to hug them, but I found my arms slowly wrapping themselves around Lo and hugging her back, whilst a smile slowly formed on my lips. I felt like a puppet being controlled by someone else, and I would have looked up to see if there was a puppet master above me, but I couldn't even move my head. Lo stood up and pulled me up with her, still overcome with joy. I felt the straps of the stilettos I was wearing rub against my ankle, another new experience for me but I assumed it was something I was going to get used to soon. I seemed to have no trouble at all walking in stilettos, it was as if I had been wearing heels for a while, then it dawned on me that I was taking on all the skills of this Lauren C. Lo grabbed a pink purse and clutch bag from my open locker and handed them to me, I didn't resist and happily placed the clutch bag over my shoulder and put my purse inside, everything was coming naturally and I seemed to gain more control over my movements. I thought if I didn't resist all these changes I'd be able to control myself. Before I could notice that Heather had left, she returned holding a pair of earrings and a necklace similar to hers, except it had a heart locket attached. Heather happily attached the earrings and shuffled around behind me to clip the necklace together at the back of my neck. We need to do something with your hair asserted Heather as she examined me from behind, my long honey blonde hair had returned without me noticing, though I assumed it would come back with all the other changes too. 
Heather tied my hair into a bun and took a hold of my hand, whilst Lo linked her arm with mine. The two girls seemed to be treating me like their best friend, but I wasn't their best friend, I'm supposed to be a guy who hardly knows them. I couldn't say that out loud of course, I didn't want to give up control of my body again, who knew what might happen if I did that. I tentatively asked what's wrong with my hair, as I didn't see anything wrong with it, I always had a thing for blondes. I wanted to add more to my argument but before I could utter another word Lo had placed her finger on my lips and told me to shush. Heather tugged on my arm and I began to follow, trying not to be distracted by my stilettos clicking on the floor, Lo clinged to my arm as we walked out of the locker room and into a busy corridor full of students. Everyone was looking at us, Heather walked through the crowds with determined demeanor, I tried to hide behind her hoping I wouldn't be recognized as a guy wearing this outfit. Nobody gave me a second look, the guys eyed me up and down and girls smiled happily at me, whilst every few meters someone would shout hey Lauren, and I'd give them a girly wave and smile before being tugged away by Heather. Lo greeted everyone and remained in her bubbly mood for the rest of the journey. I was beginning to wonder if I really looked like a girl, I know I had the body of a girl and the name of a girl, but so far I hadn't seen my face, was it still the same guy's face I had before or Lauren's face? I had to find a mirror to answer that question. Heather soon decided we needed to use the toilet, so we took a detour to the nearest girl's toilet. Heather kept hold of my hand and Lo kept a hold of my arm as we entered. The room was painted in a pale pink and white, everything was clean and there was a strong smell of flowers, everything I imagined a girl's toilet to be like. We walked up to the mirrors attached to the walls with the sinks beneath them, Lo and Heather began primping whilst I just stared at myself in the mirror in disbelief. I should have realized if Lo Bosworth was in this dream and I was a girl called Lauren C., I would have to be Lauren Conrad, my dream woman. I was a younger version of Lauren, 20 years old and as beautiful as she is in those magazines I occasionally read. I continued staring at myself in the mirror and was brought back to reality when Lo asked, what's wrong? I didn't reply and instantly ran to one of the stalls and closed the door. I was panicking, I thought I still had my man face, but now I was a totally different person, I was Lauren Conrad. Lo and Heather were standing outside the stall whilst frantically asking what was wrong. I shouted out that I was peeing, but that didn't stop my two concerned girlfriends from pushing the door open, I must have been so shocked that I forgot to lock the door. I wanted to escape now and had to say something, my lips tried to form the words I'm Lauren Conrad but what came out of my mouth was a very worried sounding I'm on my period. I never imagined myself saying that. Lo and Heather looked at me with enough concern to match my worried expression, and instantly took action whilst I stood there fearing for my life once again, I still couldn't believe I'd said something like that. Lo began fumbling around in her bag, whilst Heather proceeded to pull down my skirt and panties, I tried to bat her hands away but my movements were once again not my own, I found myself standing in front of Lo and Heather obediently. Lo pulled a tampon from her bag and handed it to Heather, whilst Heather handed my panties to Lo. I could see what was coming next, but couldn't do anything to stop it. Heather slowly inserted the tampon into my new vagina, the first time I'd felt something inside me like that, and I imagined it wasn't going to be the last. Heather made sure the tampon was in far enough and turned to Lo, who had attached a sanitary pad to the inside of my panties. Lo made me step into the panties once again and slowly slid them back up my smooth legs, then pulled up my skirt and adjusted it to sit perfectly on my feminine hips. I then regained control of my body, I knew I was never going to escape, so all I could do was break down and cry. I sat back on the toilet and held my head in my hands, not caring about the state of my makeup. Lo and Heather huddled around me whilst I cried, I tried to say what was going on, but they must have been hearing something completely different. I must have said something about a boyfriend, as they kept saying, he was never good enough for you L. See everything after that was a blur, Lo and Heather took me back to our sorority house and put me to bed, I thought I would wake up if I went to bed in a dream, so I quickly leaped into my bed, even if it had pink pillows and a pink canopy, since I was under the impression I'd wake up in my own bed. But I didn't wake up in my own bed, 
I was still in Lauren's sorority room and wearing her pajamas, and still in her body. I slid my legs out from beneath the covers and sat on the edge of the bed, I was wearing a silky purple nighty with shoulder straps, which I had to admit was incredibly comfortable. I dragged myself out of bed and examined the room I was in, it was a typical girl's room and the color scheme was pink and white. The carpet was a shining white and was incredibly fluffy, which felt wonderful around my painted toes. One large window allowed the morning light to shine into my room, whilst a large flat screen television was connected to the wall opposite my bed. There were several cabinets and chests around the room, I opened each one and found thousands of women's clothes, items, shoes, bags, purses, makeup and of course plenty of stuffed animals. I sat down on the edge of my bed and felt like I couldn't do anything, I began seeing everything in the room as mine instead of Lauren's, and my old life of being a guy was vanishing. As I sat there sulking on the edge of my bed, Loa walked into the room and beamed me a bright smile. She asked if I was feeling better and I tiredly replied with a yes, Lo sat on the bed beside me and directed my gaze to the door, where Heather had arrived with some of the girls from the cheerleader squad. They all poured into my room and huddled around me, the closest ones each gave me a hug. I started to act like Lauren and talk like Lauren, everything became so natural once again, I was even beginning to think like Lauren. The girls started pampering me, braiding my hair and painting my nails. They all kindly refused me when I offered to pamper them, and said this is all for you L.C. As I sat there on my bed, cheerleaders gathered around my hands and feet giving my nails the full treatment, Lo sitting in front of me and experimenting on me with different cosmetics, and Heather sitting behind me playing with my hair, I wondered if this was all really a dream. Had I really changed into Lauren and was I going to spend the rest of my life as her? I began to consider what the future might hold, how I would adjust to such a change and if I would learn to enjoy life as a girl. And then I woke up.